Hello and welcome back. Today I am going to make a video for you guys that I've been meaning to do for a little while, but I've been kind of waiting for the plants to grow a little bit so that I had a little bit more footage to show you guys, and that is going to be one method of propagating anthuriums, and this one is about propagating anthuriums by cuttings, stem cuttings and separating the pups, the little baby plants, from the mother plant. So. I have a really beautiful plant today that I'm going to be cutting up with you guys and I have some progress of some plants that I've done this to already which I want to show you guys. So cutting your anthurium up is a little bit intimidating and very scary. A lot of these plants are hard to source. You don't want to lose them or risk hurting them. So I understand completely the, the fear of, of cutting up that stem. So I'm going to first talk about my favorite method because I find it to be a little bit more safe and that is separating the little side pups from the mother plant and this is an anthurium ace of spades or several of them they're not all in really beautiful condition but that's because that's just the way it is sometimes when you're propagating but this plant is the plant which is constantly shooting out side pups i mean all the time on this plant so if we look a little bit closer here at this plant you will see that it has a pretty thick main stem which has been cut but on the side of it there you see there's one little bud here and there's a bud here and these are what i'm talking about when i'm talking about the little side shoots coming out of the plant so let me show you another example here there was the main stem in the middle there the big thick one and it had a little bud coming out here and there's another one there, which could potentially come, become a plant. And this one as well is a stem cutting, which has multiple little buds attached to it. So all the ones I just showed you have been topped, so to speak, meaning that the top part of the plant was cut off at one point and propagated into another plant, which actually this bigger one here is still one of the top cutting pieces it's just one of the ones that i had cut off straight like that and let it continue to grow onwards as a larger plant if i were to start digging this plant out of its pot i'm sure along the main stem here we'd find a ton of the little leaf buds that could potentially start to sprout at some point so the reason that i prefer this method is because you're basically separating the plant rather than cutting it up into pieces so the main stem obviously is the one with all the roots on it that is taking all of the energy into the plant. So what I like to do is let the little side buds get some leaves on it. And after about one or two leaves, usually it will start forming its own aerial roots separate from the main stem. And that's when I feel like I can take the cut from the main stem because then this plant will be able to provide itself some energy on its own. And I'm not taking all the energy away from the stem either. And the nice thing about this plant, when I do get to, to do that, is I can see there's already another little bud here. So what I am going to forecast happening for this plant is another leaf will come out. It will start getting aerial roots. I will cut it off and then root this in on its own. And this little guy here will shoot out a new little plantlet for us. Most anthuriums are capable of this. It's just not quite as prominent in all of them where the new leaf buds will shoot out. Sometimes you remove the little plantlet from the stem and eventually a new plant will come out of seemingly nowhere. But um, I like the Ace of Spades because it's very easy to see where those little plantlets are coming out. I would like to show you guys this metallicum. Anthurium metallicum, which kind of showcases what I'm talking about a bit more clearly. So these leaves here are attached to this large main stem, but you can see it's been cut off and this little side bud has taken new growth and given me all of these new leaves. So potentially what I would like to do is remove this from this large stem so that I can take this plant and have it on its own and then this stem here which already has another one coming out of it can continue to produce other plants for me however this plant does not really have a rooting system on it yet so I'm, I'm waiting for it to get some fresh new aerial roots before i make that cut because i see one here which does look pretty lifeless there it may provide a little bit of energy but considering that this plant has about four leaves on it, I don't think that's really sufficient for the plant. 
I also see that it has a pretty big one going down here, probably going into the soil and giving it a lot of energy, but I don't think I could confidently remove this plantlet from the stem without damaging this piece because it's so close. I could possibly do it, but I don't feel comfortable with it. So I'm just gonna keep waiting for this plant to produce aerial roots. And then I will eventually just take my knife and remove it entirely and have a little plantlet on its own. So I just wanted to show you guys this one because this is a bigger example of what I was showing you on the Ace of Spades and how it works with the little side shoots. So this plant here, I actually had cut um, a little while back that I'm gonna show you some footage of when it was just a stem basically with a tiny little pup on it and I separated the pup and then I planted the main stem and I planted the pup and this is what I have of the main stem. So when you look at this video, you're basically looking at the stem piece that's pulled out of the pot. It's really a sad example of a plant and I can't necessarily suggest that you would separate a plant when it's looking like this. Generally, you want to wait for your plant to get a lot larger and a lot healthier, but this is kind of the concept that I wanted to show you guys of how you can remove the pups from the mother plant. So this was a little bit tricky because it was a very small side shoot, but I had noticed that I could remove it from the plant with some roots, which is basically the main goal here is that you want to make sure you get some roots attached to that side pup so that it can give itself some energy. And so I just took a knife and very carefully cut it at different angles. After that point, I had planted the main stem up in here. This is it. As you can see, one of the little side pups that you saw in the video, the very small ones, came to life, gave me this beautiful leaf, and it seems to be doing pretty well. And then if you look at this here, this is the side pup that I had removed from it. So it's doing pretty good. One of the leaves was pretty stressed, so that's why I, you see them cut like this sometimes. If I see any yellowing or browning, I usually just cut it off, but leave as much of the leaf as possible so that the leaf can still provide a little bit to the plant. You probably could just remove that entirely, but this is just what I prefer. You can see there has some roots going in and I believe this plant will take off quite soon. Same goes for this one. It's just put out this leaf, which is still very soft. It's going to probably quadruple in size over the next couple of days. And then I will eventually remove this from this main stem because I see another dormant leaf bud here, which I feel quite confident will also waken up once I remove this one. So that is definitely my favorite way of doing it because I do feel like I'm able to kind of keep the plant, the main stem intact while providing energy to the side pup as well by making sure that both of the pieces have roots on it. I feel a lot better about that than just cutting up a stem piece that has pretty much no roots left on it and no evident buds coming out. That's definitely the way I'd go if you can do it and if you have the patience. And even in these videos that I'm showing you here, these sample plants, they're much smaller than they should be when you're cutting these up because it's just a lot of stress on the plant to do this. Obviously, chopping it all the time and, and making it reproduce, it really is hard on the plant. So I would definitely suggest that you wait till you have a plant that's a bit bigger and more mature to do this. But I do it a little bit early because I have such a high demand for a lot of these plants that I try to keep reproducing them as, as quickly as I can. This is the best I have as an example right now on separating the side pups, but hopefully that gives you an idea of that way of doing it, which I definitely like most. But now I will tell you about the scarier version, which is basically just chopping up that stem into pieces. Okay, so as I was saying with this here, this is one that I had attached basically like this, and I chopped it off straight with the, with the knife, and I planted the stem in here, and it kept growing, and this also kept growing. So you get the idea of the concept here. And I'm going to be taking this big queen anthurium and, and showing you guys. Okay, so this is a pretty large Queen Anthurium that I received recently and it had a very long stem on it so I 
knew right away that I was gonna cut it. I wanted to make sure that I could get these aerial roots to really grow. So that's why you see this plastic around here with just loads of moss in there. I just wanted to make sure that the, the roots had something to grow on and to encourage as much growth as possible with that. So it's a pretty ugly setup, but I just wanted to give it a little bit of extra help, so to speak. So I'm gonna remove this So you can kind of see what we got going on here and I, I feel good about those roots that I see. I was waiting for this plant to put out a new leaf, which is why this one looks so pretty much perfect compared to the other ones. The other ones had gotten, you know, damaged in shipping and then it had to recover and they, they always do this when you in, import plants. But then I usually let them sit and recover and put out a new leaf and kind of harden off a little bit and then I can repot it or do do as I, as I wish with it. So I've been waiting on, on this for a little while and I feel like now it is ready to go. So there's a bunch of aerial roots on there I'm feeling good about. So what I'm gonna do actually is I wanna include all of these roots that I see and then my hope is that the remaining stem, even though I don't see any leaf buds on it that are very visible to me, I will hope that the main stem will put out a little side shoot eventually and then our big beautiful top cutting will continue on being beautiful and growing on its own independently from the rest of the stem okay so here we have the original piece which has some roots left on it but we do have our top piece with a bunch of roots attached to it so i'm i'm pretty happy to see that how far down it had grown into the pot. All right, so what I like to do oftentimes after doing cuttings is to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on here to kind of prevent any sort of bacterial growth or um, you know, rot situation that helps kill off the bacteria for rot. So I will do that. And then I will let it sit for a little bit just to kind of cow this over slightly. I'm not gonna leave it for a long time, but just a little bit. And then I'm going to plant it in moss. Okay, I'm going to plant it up in this pot here. And I'll probably actually have to hang the plant afterwards as well because that leaf is so long. So I'm just packing it in pretty loosely, but enough so that the plant is stable in the pot. People ask a lot how you can use pure moss for the plants without it rotting. and. The thing about the moss is that there are so many large air pockets in here that it generally, as long as you have a fan blowing and it's not drenched every single day, it generally just dries dries itself out and keeps the air flow in there, at least for the anthuriums in, in my case and how I keep them. It actually isn't reaching here yet, so I don't necessarily have to hang it, although I think I might in the greenhouse, we'll see. I'm not gonna remove the older leaves yet either, Usually what I do is I leave the leaves on it for a while, even though they're mostly broken and damaged. And I eventually cut them off when it's giving me two or three new leaves so that all you have left are the beautiful new undamaged leaves like this one here. But these are still providing energy. So for now they can stay until we get even more leaves out of this beautiful plant. So I'll set that aside and then we will deal with the other half of the plant. Okay, so here you see the bottom half of the plant and there are still quite a few really nice roots on it. So that's great. That's a great sign. I don't know. I see a couple of very small leaf buds here that I'm guessing the new plant will come out of, but when you do the cuts like this, through my experience, it takes a really long time before you see any changes or growth on the plant. So it's, a, it's something you have to be quite patient with. And if you're wondering why I haven't separated the roots like this earlier, generally when I receive the plants, I don't want to touch the roots at all. I just check to make sure that I see white healthy roots and then I just surround them with moss 
because the plants already undergo so much stress from traveling here that I don't want to now go ripping at its roots. So generally, if it is planted in soil, I just put moss around it and leave it like it is and then eventually go back in like I did today and loosen the roots up and repot it and give it some new potting medium. And that's usually how they acclimate best from my experience. So usually I put the anthuriums in pure moss, but since this one has already been planted in a cocoa fiber, I'm gonna stick with it because it's used to it and just keep it in, in the conditions that it was already in. Okay, I've gotten rid of that ugly blue pot. That's probably all I had at the time and I'm gonna put it in this nice black one instead, the same size as the other plant. And I, it seems like they've mixed cocoa fiber with large volcanic rock. So I'm gonna just add more cocoa fiber, mix it around and plant it back in that. Plants can really be grown in several different mediums. It all depends. I use various different types of mediums. As you see here for one portion of this plant, I'm gonna use moss. The other portion, I'm gonna use this. It, it all depends a little bit on how the plant came to you if you're propagating it, the climate that it's being cared for in, so that's why I'm using different mediums. Okay, so I've covered it to the point where I meet the roots and I'm gonna leave all of this top part exposed, hoping that the leaf buds that are dormant here will start to grow for us at some point. I'm gonna put this back in the greenhouse in the recovery greenhouse and I will be putting the top half of it in the recovery greenhouse also. Okay, so here we have the results of a plant that has been chopped in half. And this actually was, I was still very cautious with this by letting the top portion put out a new leaf and get some aerial roots going as well as letting some of the main stem keep the main rooting system on it as well. So this is a pretty safe way to do it in comparison to when you have something like this, for example, which is just a, a rootless stem piece, which could be chopped up as well. This is a lot scarier to do because there are no roots and it doesn't really have anything giving it nutrition. It's just a little piece of life. But actually, I see here, we have a little leaf bud started. So you can actually do this with completely rootless, leafless stems also. It's a lot slower and a lot scarier to have a piece like this and hope that it comes to life. However, I have done it and, and that it is possible to do with something like this too. So I hope you guys were able to get a little information out of this video. I hope that I was clear enough. It was a little bit difficult to stay on track and showcase everything exactly how I want to, but I hope that you kind of understand a little bit better how to propagate your anthurium by cutting up the stem. I would absolutely suggest waiting until your plants are a little bit bigger and healthier. And if you have a piece like this, you know, sometimes this is all you're left with if a plant does not acclimate well in your home, but uh, there is hope for pieces of stem like this at least. So. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I, I would be happy to clarify some things or, or just talk more about propagation of anthuriums. And with that being said, I do still plan on releasing at some point the anthurium propagation by seedlings, but that is a bit more complicated and I'm still working on the footage for that one. It's not all the time that my anthuriums are in bloom and I wanna make sure that I'm getting um, some, just some good footage for it. So at some point I'll get to that as well. So have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me again and see you next time.